Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ben, and in this episode of the Smoking Hot Confessions Barbecue Podcast, we're hanging out with the founder of the iconic Black Bear Barbecue. Hey family, hope you're well wherever you are and you got that thin blue smoke rolling. Today, as I said at the top, we're hanging out with Hayden Graham, who is the founder of the iconic Black Bear Barbecue Joint down in Sydney. It's the home of the Invitational. It's uh, it, Look, it's a great story. He, he's been doing so much with that and uh, I'm really looking forward to getting into that. But before I bring him in here, I've just got a couple of announcements that I do need to run by you. First up, I'd like to officially welcome our, our podcast partner for this episode, OzPig. If you're looking for the ultimate outdoor camp cooker, this is definitely what you want to get into. They've got grills, they've got uh, heating plates, they've got rotisseries, they've got smoker attachments. Everything that you love to cook in your backyard on your barbecue at the moment, you can now take out into the bush with you and you can have a good time with that. Now, if you're just at the start of your barbecue journey, you can head on over to smokinghotconfessions.com. We've got recipes, we've got tips, we've got how-tos, we've got all the podcast information there. But perhaps most importantly, for those of you at the start of your journey, we've got our free ebook out there, The Beginner's Guide to Real Barbecue. This has got everything you need to go from zero to hero in the world of low and slow barbecue. It was recently awarded by the National Barbecue and Grilling Association based out of the United States. So it's a really good read. It's completely free. Head on over to smokinghotconfessions.com and pick yourself up one of them. Now, big welcome to those people joining us in the Smoking Hot Confessions barbecue community on Facebook today, which is where we're doing this live podcast recording. These people are going to be able to uh, drop comments and leave questions for Hayden throughout the recording. And if you would like to be a part of future recordings, head on over to Facebook, do a search for the Smoking Hot Confessions barbecue community and come join us. It is where we do these live recordings, and it's also just a great uh, community to hang out in. All the guff is left at the door. We just hang out and talk barbecue, and it's a, it's a, just a beautiful family-friendly corner of the internet to hang out and spend your time. Now, if you are catching this uh, episode on the replays later on, if you're on YouTube, give us a thumbs up, a subscribe, and hit that little notification bell. If you're catching it on Facebook, it's all about the likes, the comments, and the shares, particularly the shares. If you want to tag a friend in the comments, that would really help us out. And over on Instagram TV, on IGTV, we do have one of those IGTV channels. It's a cute little uh, love heart, a comment, and a follow. And if you're listening in on a podcasting app, particularly if it's Apple Podcasts, do take a couple of minutes, give us a five-star rating and review. They really help us out a lot. And in the last 30 days, we've been as high as number six on the US podcast charts for food and number three in Australia. So that's really helpful and really triggers the algorithms to... uh, to help us push our message and the message of our guests out a lot further and wider. Now, as I did say at the top, we have Hayden Graham. He's a hell of a cook, he's a hell of a businessman, and he's combined those two loves to create Black Bear Barbecue. It started out as a tiny takeaway joint and is now a multi-site operation, $5 million a year turnover, and is the home of the annual Australasian Barbecue Alliance Invitational event. So it's a great story, and I'm looking forward to getting into it. So speaking of which... Let's go find Hayden. This is the internationally awarded Smoking Hot Confessions Barbecue Podcast with your host, Ben Arnott. How long has it been since your last confession? Hayden, welcome to the confessional, mate. It's great to have you here. Yeah. Oh, it's great to be here, Ben. Thanks for inviting me. It's, it's, a, it's a great show you do and I uh, hope I can help. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Thank you very I'm much. Now, take my take my face off yeah <laughs> <laughs> now first of all tell us where you are because the background behind you there is just stunning oh well, we're down in here at um i've got a property down at um the beautiful hawkesbury river at leetsvale so um we bought that just uh when was it january last year just just before the big flood so we just just bought the property and then we had flood coming up well it's way above my head here so I went through everyone's um, garages and took everyone's water tanks and took all, uh, a fridge full of beer, which I'm I'm gonna get it back. So, <laughs> yeah, wasn't too wasn't too bad for us because we only just got it. So, um, a lot of our neighbours uh, really their whole life, um, all their holiday homes and their boats and their whole life's work has just been washed away. So it was really sad to see that. But um, yeah, we we. I'm still down here every weekend um, building it. So, 
Oh yeah, right, so you didn't actually have a house built yet. Fun. Yeah, we had we had four cabins on on this property. We had four. Uh, we bought it off a group of people. Um, they all had their own little cabin on, and yeah, we three of them washed away. We even lost a skateboard ramp. We had a half pipe here, and it floated down. There was pictures of it going underneath Brooklyn Bridge, fifty k's away. So that was that oh, was pretty wow. fun to see on the on the yeah yeah it's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, so anyway. So no, it's a fresh start for us now. Um, everything's new. We've got new new tiles, new new carpet, new ovens, and it, it's it's good fun. It gets me back to my roots, um, renovating houses. So um, it's good. They get me away from the barbecue for a little bit. So yeah, a bit fresh. Yeah, it gives you a nice break. Now, are you near yeah. the um? Are you near the oyster farms in that area? No, oyster farms would be they're they're down towards Brooklyn a bit. You'd, it'd be 30 k's away on, on the river, I guess. So we're up near Wiseman's Ferry. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, right here. Yeah, yeah. Still good fishing. Yeah. A fair bit inland there. Uh, it's it's a beautiful, beautiful spot. We've been coming here since, oh, 15 years now. Um, but not here. And at a property three doors down. And we've always had a, uh, a love affair with this place. And as soon as one, it's very hard to get one because no one ever sells. So as soon as one popped up, we came down, me and my mate went halves in it, and we uh, bought it, and it's been the best thing we've ever done, I think. So got my boat license for the first time, and now I'm getting falling in love with fishing again. So you never know. It could be black bear barbecue fish or something soon. It's some sort of seafood restaurant. <laughs> well, I would, that's kind of where I was going with it. So like, are we are we going to see some some fresh yeah. Hawkesbury oysters on the menu and, uh, um, and, and some fish and all that sort of stuff? No. Inter- interesting enough, like three doors up or five doors up, there's a there's a prawn trawler guy there, and he's he's a he's the only what I've heard. He he told me this. He might be lying, but he told me this. He's the only um eel farmer in New South Wales. So he he he's got all these traps. He traps eels. He's got eight tons of eels in his tanks, and he used to export them. And the export markets dropped out because of the uh, 2020. And um, yeah, and he actually came up to me yesterday and said, um, "Do you want to do some trial some smoked eel and cryovac it and sell it in the butcher shop?" And I went, "Oh, that's a good idea." So you never know, folks. You might see a smoked eel or two going through Black Bear's uh, butcher cabinet. So yeah, it's interesting. I've never actually tried it, but I don't know. yeah, I I lived in South Korea for two years, and uh, charcoal grilled yeah. eel is is a delicacy over there. They have whole like uh, specialist restaurants yeah. towards it over there. So there might be a might be an avenue there for you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, why not? If he runs, there's a massive hole in the market, so you never know. Um, and he's got, he reckons eight tons of eels, like that just up there. And he does all the Hawkesbury prawns for bait and stuff. So he's right in it. Loves his fishing and so do we. So it's, it's good. Sounds beautiful, man. So good. So what was the last thing that you barbecued for yourself? For myself. <laughs> Last night, me and um, me and uh, my, my, my mate here, we we put some black bear sausages on on the on the grate just on our fire pit behind me. Sat there having a few beers last night, talking talking trash as we do, and um, yeah, just enjoyed burning some barbecue, uh, burning some sausages on the barbecue over the raging fire. So yeah, that's all I did. Um, usually we we bring some um, steaks down, but last night we were a bit lazy and. We had a big day building, and we just the sun the sun went down on us too fast, so we threw some snags on the barbie. It was good. Sounds great, mate. The uh, cooking sausages over a live fire was what me got was what got me into it as a kid. We used to um, we used to have to burn oh, the stumps yeah. out of the farm that I grew up on. So we'd run around, and part of the bushfire oh, okay. uh, mitigation oh, yeah. was we'd we'd pick up all the fallen branches and things, and then we'd stack them up around a stump and. Uh, and have a big bonfire so that a we were burning right. we were controlled burning off the uh, the ground litter and uh, c we were getting rid of the stumps that yep. were uh, in the way so and then we'd we'd run down with a pan and, uh, and and burn sausages in a pan on the coals there. Uh, yeah, my, yeah, our, our dads used to love burn, burning sausages. I used to hate it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, do we have to have sausages? Uh, yeah, that's, anyway, we know how to do it better now. So yeah, yeah. Funny. So is it that? Family connection that that got you into barbecue in the first place. Um, well, I'll tell you what it was, and it, and it, and it actually, 
it was it was a weird one how I remembered it. It was one of those um, memories that just disappeared, and it wasn't until someone asked me on stage, I think, at Meatstock in um, New Zealand, like, what, what got you into it? And it sort of somehow came up in my memories, and it, and it was my uncle, actually, because my uncle and auntie lived in Melbourne, and their kids all grew up in Melbourne, and every year, well, not every year, every fourth year or so, me and mum would catch the Greyhound bus down there and, and spend the Christmas holidays down there. And um, they used to rave about this Weber cooked turkey. And it was was this, I don't know, everyone always would rave about it. And none of us had Webers up here. We just had a little kibachi grill bolted to the side of the house. That's what dad had. So, um, yeah, it was crazy. And um, yeah, it was good. And then they, then they bought a house in Cherrybrook. And, um, then it just became this Christmas tradition where he'd smoke a turkey. And, um, yeah, eventually he, he passed away a few years ago now. And um, I've actually got the um, barbecue, the little red oh, – it's a red, red kettle barbecue at, um, that we use at a uh, vineyard. Yeah, so it's good. It's good. Um, so that's what got me into it, and I didn't even know. So. <laughs> there you go. It's always the family connections, isn't it? Yeah. Beautiful it is, stuff. It is. And then, then I got a um, – and I got a Webber for my 21st, I think it was, or my engagement. It was around about the same time. I always get too confused. The wife doesn't like that. But, um, yeah, I, I got a Webber. And as you do, you get um the quick light heat beads and you, you light it up once or twice. And as most people do, it's all too hard. And, and they, it sits in the um, garage for 10 years until you throw it out. But, um, uh. Yeah, I've still got that Weber now. It's um, it's good. I fell back in love with it. We we started going um, camp at Bathurst. We me and the boys got to, to Bathurst, and we used to take Weber up to Bathurst, and then it just sort of got. I know you just every week. You, it's an addiction, totally addiction. And you just keep oh Friday, Friday. Um, what are we doing? What are we doing? We run down the butchers or the Pendle Hill meat market, to try and find a brisket. Um, yeah, and try. I don't know. I, I guess it was that the hype around that TV show, the American Pitmasters. It was like, holy, holy cow! There's like this whole other barbecue, all these cuts that we haven't even tried, and and you walk into the local butchers, and it was hard to get rub. It was hard to get like it was really hard to get brisket. I think one of the first briskets I ever saw was at one of the Costco's I went to, and I was like, oh, Ben check this out. They've got half a cow in the fridge. Like, what is this? And uh, we picked it up. Like, That's a brisket. This is a proper brisket. We've been cooking, we've been cooking these little things you get from, I don't know, two kilo things. And it's like, once you, once you get a proper seven, eight kilo brisket in your hands, you go, hang on, this is a whole new ball game. So, um, yeah, we bought one. And I think one of the first times we ever bought one, I ran into Wes from Bovine and Swine at Costco. And he had, uh, Australasian Barbecue Association hat on. I said, this guy looks like he no- knows what he's talking about. And um, yeah, we took a, a selfie with him. This would be five years ago. I think five years ago, yeah, down at Costco at Auburn. He goes, these pork ribs are the best ones you can ever get. And he's telling you, yeah, you know how Wes is if you ever met him. He's the driest person ever. But um, oh, we love Wes. It's, um, it was great to meet him that day. And um, I've got huge respect for what he's done for barbecue in Australia and, and um the, the whole of Australia really he sort of led the way a bit. You know, that the um the one man band that just that just pumped out really good quality barbecue for years and years. So. Yeah, I I think he was um he may have been one of the very first to actually have a low and slow dedicated barbecue joint. There's maybe maybe yeah. Lance Rosen's uh big boy barbecue might predate yep. him a little bit. Um but it was uh yep, it, sure. it it'd have to yep. be close. He yep. he was definitely one of the first ones. Yeah, especially for us because oh, sorry, we're 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 in Sydney, so it was um, there was there's there wasn't anything to all these shows in the US. It's like why isn't there anything out here? Like come on, like what Australia's meant to be good around meat and fire, and but we were just so lazy about it, I guess. So we just didn't have that tradition that America has. I think anyway, we've we've hopefully plugged a bit of a hole there for the Sydney community. I, I dare say that you have, yeah. So you uh you discovered yeah, low and yeah. slow through that TV show Barbecue Pitmasters, and then you uh you you found brisket kind of by accident at uh, at at Costco. 
what was the uh, what yeah. was the progression like after that? Was it was it rapid, or did you sort of slowly get more into low and slow, or was it just well, you, you were hooked straight away, and then it was every weekend you were cooking something? Yeah, well, I'm I'm just a poor humble carpenter with uh, no money at the time, and I had a house, and we just finished the renovations, and we sold the house, and I said to my 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 number one fan, which is my wife, and she lets me do a whole lot of stuff that I guess she shouldn't. Like she, you know, I come up with crazy <laughs> ideas, like let's buy a 1957 Chev and um, let let's let's buy two Radar Hill trailer smokers and hire them out for party. And and she went, you know, you're, you're crazy enough, you might just get this thing to work. So she allowed me to buy them after we sold the house as my little present to myself. The the Chevy and the trailer smoker. And, um, and then we started that, that business didn't really take because it was, there was no one around that could actually work it. And it's not like a, a spit where, you know, you, there's a lot of lesson involved and, and people weren't sure of themselves or back themselves to actually hire the smoker and to cook it. So that business really didn't go anywhere. Um, so we just used it. It was great to take to campsites Every long weekend, we'd, we'd turn up to a, um, a caravan park with this smoker, and, it, and then all of a sudden, you got a massive crowd of people around saying, "Oh, is it a train?" and <laughs> all this sort of stuff. So, um, yeah. Then, whenever we went camping, and we went camping a lot, especially with the core group of guys, the start of Black Bear. So, Glenn, Ben, and me, we'd always camp every every month. We'd be camping somewhere, and um, yeah, we'd turn up with a esky full of brisket and pork belly and pork ribs and beef ribs and we'd spend more time cooking barbecue than fishing and doing the camp stuff and um and then one day I, one day I had this um revelation I guess we we're, was we're, we're sitting in the car park at the hardware store where we got our stuff at Blacktown and there's this little takeaway shop across the road and it's a poor sale and I saw it for months and months and I was like I wonder how much I actually want for this place. And um, went over and had a conversation with the lady and, and it was quite cheap and we had to buy the business as a, as a thing and take over the lease. And I said, and it was so cheap, the, the rent's so cheap that I said to Ben, like, imagine if we just bought the place and just did barbecue on a Friday. So we just use our trailer pit, put an event on and just see who turns up, get a food license, all that sort of stuff. And then I did an event on Facebook. I, I didn't even sponsor it. The Black Bear thing was around. I guess we, we did a bit of promotion through Meat Stock. When we were at Meat Stock, before the company was going, we sort of went around and gave shirts out and stuff like that. We had some really good artwork, which always helps. And, yeah, I made an event. And we had a line of, like, it was, it was belting down rain. People were standing in, in line on this dead-end street in Blacktown with umbrellas lining up for, and I'm going, wow, like we've really got something here. And, um, never forget building down rain, the shops, the shops getting renovated because I'd jackhammered all the tiles up. So we weren't even in the shop. We're in the car park. We just put a, you know, a, a quick trade up and, 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 and the wife goes, did you get any change? And we go, oh, shit. so we ran, ran down to the bank got $500 worth of change for the till and she put it in and, and, and when she opened the, the till and put the, the money, the, the coins in it tipped over and all the money went all over the place in the rain. And I was like, Oh, like it was anyone that was there. It was, the, and there's, there's still the same, the same two blokes, I think that first lined up an hour before that they still come into the shop. Um, they all, they all know that story and it was um it was a hectic hectic opening night for a black bear barbecue and um from then it's just grown and that same that same night after we sold out I rang Rob from Radar Hill Smokers and I said you've got to get me a bigger smoker next week and he goes oh I can do it in fourteen days I said all right we'll just get one so yeah uh, the next thing I know we we had a what was it a thirty inch it was a 30 inch radar on like a like a chef one on wheels um that turned up managed to get it inside under a hood got a hood made um and then we cooked on the trailer pit 
and the 30 the next week and it sold out as well and i rang him again i said get me another one what have you got and he goes i can build a 36 i've got a couple of tubes and i said all right well build me one and then that came two weeks later and then filled that up and that sold out as well and i was look i'm, I'm going oh my god like the amount of money we're turning over and it was, it was just like why why don't we do this for a living and quit the building carpentry game and then um someone convinced me to buy a coffee machine that was like 20 grand or 17 grand and i was like oh, i don't know wow so we, we we bought the coffee machine and then ever since there's this a mad community of just local factory workers and tradesmen that get their brisket and egg roll absolute local brilliant coffee like it's the best best coffee going around by black drum and they're just it's roasted just down the road and then we do pork belly and egg rolls and we come up with the hungry bear Bre the brekkie box and now we've got a brekkie burger and we've moved in the burgers as well so yeah it's just an amazing ride and i've been all over the world um cooking barbecue been in new zealand and brazil argentina chile um with the guys from meat stock we went over there for Tr Tris Carter. We can get into that if you want. But um, yeah, it's just been an amazing ride, and uh, and we're, I've got barbecue to thank for it, and I, and and all the celebrities that go with it. Like um, I never I'd meet all these people, like especially like Mo Kaysen and um, Louis Mueller and Wayne, well, I mean Wayne Mueller and um, Mike Johnson. Like I'm friends with those guys. It's amazing. So um, looking forward to the next chapter. G'day and welcome to OzP, creating great meals, great memories and flavour born from fire for over 15 years. Born and designed right here in Australia for Aussie conditions, the OzP range is your best friend for the outdoors. Featuring three stoves in the range, there's one built for adventure, home and in between. And with the oven smoker attachment, you'll totally transform your OzP into your very own portable smoker. There's a huge range of genuine accessories such as the rotisserie and char grill, helping you achieve maximum flavour born from fire. At Auspeak, we stand behind our range and 15 years of development and customer feedback has led us here. Dollar for dollar, you won't find better value. Each unit features a solid 3mm steel construction, zinc plated legs, fully steel press shape and robot welded seams. Every Auspeak unit comes with a 3 year limited structural warranty, so when you buy an Auspeak, you can trust that you're buying quality. Got a project you'd like to work on with the SHC team? Shoot Ben an email on ben at smokinghotconfessions.com and let's have a conversation. Alrighty, so we, we kind of touched on the uh, the origin of, of Black Bear there, the, the, the car park roots of it all. Um, at, at what yeah. point were you, were you able to finish that, um, that, that shop refit and, and move into the shop and, and sort of kick off that, that first shop? Um, I guess it was about a two month process. Uh, I had to get it like, um, on the approvals and stuff like that. Um, Strata had to be aware of what was going on. It wasn't much of a change of what it was. It was always a mum and dad fish and chip shop with fries and everything. Um, we did a bit of landscaping out the front. So it was a little bit more friendly cause it was just like dirt on the dirt. And so we put some grass in and made it nice. And, um, friendly and, and it's a it's a great little spot in the middle of Blacktown where people can meet with their reps or whatever and they sit there on their computers for a good they, they can be there all day just doing their own you know business meetings and stuff so it's a it's a good spot and I, I, I'm really proud of Blacktown it's um it's still it's still like all the all the neighbors are great there um never had any trouble there um never ever thought I'd be have a business in Blacktown, but it's a it's a great down to earth town that um that, yeah I've, I've fallen in love with really I I've, I came from um Castle Hill and like I didn't know where Blacktown was growing up um yeah all I knew was the houses didn't have bricks and they had fibro on the outside I couldn't understand that coming from Castle Hill so um <laughs> yeah it's a, it's a great it's a great <laughs> it's a, it's a great it's a great down to earth um, spot for a barbecue joint. Um, um, so glad to be there and found it. Yeah. Right. So, so Blacktown was the original location then there on Ford street and you've got a, yeah. a second location yeah. open in, in Wetherill park now. 
Yeah. Um, so that, that sort of happened. What was that? When did that happen? That, that would have happened two years ago, two and a half years ago now. Um, so some of the, the people that came and helped us out on those initial nights, those crazy nights, um, were just local mums and dads that are on you through the soccer club. And um, one of them, one of them lost a job and I said, why don't you work for us? And that was one of the first, apart from the barista, one of the first uh, ladies that came and worked full time for us. So her name's Liz, Liz Hawkins. Uh, and then she worked a ring out for six or seven months there, or much longer than that. But then her husband came over, Paul, and he, he, he worked up the, the, the road in the panel shop. And then that panel shop got sold. I said, oh, mate, why don't you become pitmaster here and they uh yeah they, they threw the whole entire family at us so we had two wages which was a lot of which is a massive um it's a massive call to do because i i felt so much pressure trying to um you get, you're paying a whole household and it's um it's because it, my wife works everyone else's wife have have got jobs elsewhere so that that takes a strain off the whole thing but having to guarantee a family income it was there was a lot of pressure i felt a lot of pressure from that and then they they just swallowed it up they they, they worked tirelessly long hours um and they still do and then that's what when i when i found um me, me and chop found uh weather park location one christmas party we were dropping off to down the road for a catering gig and we walked drove past this big empty place at weather park we go, oh my god that's just perfect like it's exactly the same as blacktown just better it, it was heaps of car parking spots huge huge um uh fit, fit to the the hoods there um had storage for wood it just ticked all the right boxes so uh, so we did what we could and um got the money together and then liz liz and chop are partners with us over there so it's like a third 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 um and uh, they're great. So they've they've moved. Both of them went over there, and then uh, a chef went over there, and then we replaced them. And then, yeah, it's kicking goals. Weather Park, it, it's you know it's paid paid its not self off, but it's paid all its debts off, and it's it's flying. It's great. They 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 do exactly the same stuff as us, and I think that's really important. I can't you can't be different. You as much as you don't want to be a McDonald's or KFC, you. you you got to serve the same stuff at each location, and if you fail to do that, um, the brand fails. I, I think so. Um, it's important to the brand to to stay true to our core. How how we do brisket? How do we do pork belly and stuff? Yeah, a a consistent customer experience is uh, is uh, is ideal. Oh, hundred percent. You can't have you can't cheapen the brand at all. Um, and we 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 get really good reviews. I'm so um, so pleased with all the reviews we get. I stopped reading them about two years ago. I used to get every day is so obsessed with oh what what's the reviews on Facebook like and and I'm sure you're on edge all the time. And it's like when you stop reading them and you know you got a consistent quarter four point nine star and it's not dropping. It's yeah, so it's good. I'm really happy with the team and I'm proud of every employee that we've got we've got i think that if we got an event on we'd be employing 60 people over a weekend so um and they all they've all bought into it into the brand so it's good great yeah definitely now you you mentioned the the pressure when you're opening the the multiple sites of um of having to then Mm. feeling feeling the the obligation to take care of that whole family how did you how did you handle that pressure how did you get your head around that oh alcohol <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> um <laughs> no it was um it was good because i knew i knew the people uh they 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 so they were so good at blacktown um and and i just knew that that they, they, they just they're perfect so um, to do it in a state or to do it a bit of a distance away would that that would be the real test. But when when they're the shops are only twenty five minutes apart, so they're all local. Um, if someone needs a brisket or we're running out, we can chuck it in a warmer box and and, and restock a store, and we'll just transfer the transfer between the stores or whatever. Um, 
that's key as well, um, especially in barbecue, as you know. Like, it's good to be romantic about barbecue and have the lines and everything out the front and everyone getting there and ego and hope, hope we get a bit of brisket before they run out. It's good to be like that, but I think I'd hate, we always hated sending people away and like, oh, there was no ribs or whatever reason. Like, the irony is, like, you run out of brisket, so you offer them ribs, which would be better than the brisket, maybe. And, but they'd go, oh, no, we really wanted the brisket. And it's like, ah. So oh, that was like, everything needs to be available all the time at Black Bear. And, and I think we've done pretty good. But like, once you get your head around the numbers you need to do day by day at each store, the chefs really do a really good job of, of keeping that under under control. So, um, uh, yeah, I pretty much guarantee if you turn up to Black Bear Barbecue, you'll be able to get what you want. So, um, I, I mean, and that's that's a good thing to have in barbecue. I think um, consistency and and enough stock all the time. So, it's good. We, we've worked out a lot of problems that that people can't get their head around in barbecue. Like how how do you keep the meat? How do you hold the meat? How do you order it in, how it's stock control. There's a lot of huge problems there and complex ones. Like, you know, everything from, you know, the wood deliveries and, um, it, yeah, cool room rotation and stuff like that. But me as a builder and carpenter really have no place, not not no place, but I, I've got no not no idea, but we, we had to sort it out from an outsider's view on like um catering like we had to work it out and we've worked it out perfectly we've got i've got a great team under me um scott chop um he he's he's um he came on board i don't know if you know him or whatever he's always around he always sticks his head in any any photo and um he's enjoying it he 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 was just a pest he was um he he is a truck driver that turned up every morning and um then started turning up every Friday night for just like literally just jump on the knife and slice brisket and just enjoyed it. Just give me some food. That's all he wanted. And then one, one day we paid him and that was our biggest mistake. So um, <laughs> we, we paid him, to, <laughs> we paid him to turn up and then next thing you know, he's quit his job and, and he's operations manager. Now he's, he comes from a sales background and he's an integral part of um, our operation. And we wouldn't have got where we are without him. I, I'm, I got no um no harm qualms in saying that, so um massive respect goes out to to Scott for sorting out a lot of problems. He he does ordering, he does negotiations on price for stuff, and um just loves it. He just absolutely loves the business side of stuff and coming up with the new ideas and promotions and um yeah, he's got a handle on everything. And where I've sort of taken a not a backward step, but like I, I used to do all the socials. I used to do um, everything to do with that, the, the the artwork and all that. But now I'm just I'm just an Instagram guy. So I do the Instagram stuff and uh, help out where I'm needed. I don't cook anymore. Um, only only down here I cook. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm, there's there's much better people than me on the tools at, at Black Bear. You know, behind a knife than than me. I'm got no problem in saying that either. So. We got proper chefs, and we've trained chefs to do the pit mastering. Um, exactly the same as the Ben. Ben, my brother, he's um sort of the, like the overseer of the the, the the chefing part of the thing. Um, but yeah, we, we've all got our own little bit we do, and I and I I don't see how we could grow to how we are without that, without that core group of four blokes. I, if it was just me and the wife and there's a lot of little companies out there around, around Australia and around the world that just, Oh, we open a barbecue joint and your whole family's involved. And you know, you're, you're from, yeah, you down at Costco or down at meat suppliers, you're back, you're cooking. It, it's a massive effort and, and huge respect goes out to all the companies like that. There's so much hard work involved in long hours. Um, for not, not little reward, but it's, I, I feel their pain. I, I really do. So and I'm grateful for having the team around me that I've got. So it just fell in my lap. Yeah. Sounds like it was all well planned to me, my friend. 
No. <laughs> So now tell us a bit about the uh, the Invitational. The Invitational, um, that was that was a brainchild, I think, of uh, Big Willie Wilcox from Badass Barbecue and some and the guy that used to run the Australian Brewery. So they said, "Oh, we can we could come together and put together a uh, like an end of year celebration type thing." Um, and when the Australian Brewery, they did a fantastic event. We were there selling, so it was Wes and it was a there's, you know, first in Merck and it was a great event. Um, who won that? I think Sterling did, didn't he? Luton Booty. I think so. Yeah. And that's yeah. where we, we met, we met Smitty there. So, um, that was a, that was a great weekend. I remember that was long hours. And again, we sold out and it was a great, everything was good. It was literally just down the road from us. And then the next year they didn't, they didn't want to renew it. They didn't, they didn't make any money on it. I don't think so. Um, which is it's pretty hard to do it's pretty hard to ask the public to pay money to come in and see teams cook but you're not allowed to eat and there's you know and you always get complaints and i mean there's everyone's fallen into that trap so so we got given that by who was it um adam roberts adam, adam roberts was highly involved in that and he he came to us and asked um would we like to do it and at the time we had a pop-up store down at Moore Park going, um, which we had a little uh, partnership with a, a few other people there. And we got in there at the entertainment centre and we said, oh, we've got a perfect spot in the middle of Sydney. We'll, we'll, we'll do it here. We won't charge anything for just get, just get hype, you know? And so that was a, that was a money pit, that thing. Like we didn't, it, it's a learning curve, right? So you got to, you know, you got to, high toilet and security and staff and first aid officers and fences. And, oh, it was, um, it, it ended up costing us a, a, a quite little penny that one, but it was good for the brand and it was good to, it was good. It was good to dip our foot into the, um, I don't know, this, that space, that festival space, I guess you could say. And, um, and chop, chop thrived on it. He loved doing the organization of it and talking to sponsors and stuff. And, um, he con he conned us into doing the, the, the other one the, the the next year at um where where was it uh, at Hawkesbury Showground and put on a fabulous event um made a bit of money sort of paid us back for the year before um I think it was great we had some really big names come out from the states Mo Casey competing Sterling Mike Johnson and of course all the the regular um the barbecuers and uh we had a great family that won it i think it was a big it was a ten thousand dollar first prize um and with diamond rings and stuff and it was good it was really good it had a great weekend no trouble um the police were happy with our alcohol license and stuff like that so we've built a good foundation there for the next um the next one um yeah but just yeah just with the current world situation it's gonna be hard to um, do that again this year for sure. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. I was going to ask about that one because I I was just on the ABA website there um, yesterday, and it it said that uh, that yeah. it, that the invitational had been um, uh, cancelled till further notice. Cancelled. Yeah. Um. So I, I guess the cat's out of the bag. Like it's not out of the bag. I can let it out if you want. But there's um the we're renting vineyard. Obviously, it's a big. It's a big it's a big space and next door is the same space without any building on it. So it's a three tiered car park. So we're going to rent that out for car parking and because we need car parking because it's, it's crazy when it's busy. So um, don't want to upset the neighbors. So the same landlord's going to rent, rent us out that space. So there's enough room there for 20 or 30 teams. And it's just going to be, we're going to do, we're done it going to do competitions there. Um, so, the idea is to do a competition once a month. Like you could do a little and whatever the people pay to get in, hopefully with a sponsor or two to that, we'd just, we'd be able to run comps and you just, just, you'd have to take some sort of management fee out for the rent or the, the land or whatever. But the idea is to have markets there, to have a swap mate there. And then at the end of the month, have a barbecue comp every month. Um, 
so it just pays for itself, pays for the lease on the land, and uh, hopefully brings the barbecuing community back out into the wide world. So um, hopefully, if if all things go go to plan, that that's going to happen. Um, we get along with all the landlords and stuff. But there's a few little details we've got to sort out, but um, um, that should be that should be a great space for barbecue comp. Yeah, can't, I can't wait to announce it, but I, I sort of have, I guess. <laughs> I guess that's it now. Yeah, yeah. That's all right though. We're we're, <laughs> yeah. we're doing this uh, we're doing this live uh, recording today, but then uh, I'll I'll take it down about an hour or so after we're yeah. finished, and then publish it again in a few weeks. Okay. So you should. Well, it's a little you, teaser. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. mate, um, with that one competition uh, every month, um, is that going to build into a like a a Champions League no, final no. competition at the end, or is that going to be building into the Invitational, or are yeah. you still going to be doing both, or? Uh, I don't think we'll be doing the invitational this year, but if we can do a, a, a couple of small um, comps that maybe you could have a, like a, I don't know, you could have a, um, say if you do six comps and then the winner of each gets a space to take out the end of the year, why not? Well, I'm open to suggestions really. Like what, what would suit barbecue teams better? Like what I want, like I'm willing to, yeah, put anything up there. Like if that, if that's what people want, uh, and it get um teams there, why not? Like um, it'd be good. So yeah, like I guess um, send your um thoughts through to chop. <laughs> yeah, we'll uh we'll, we'll we'll make sure that we start to get some suggestions through. And if anybody's watching this live now and they've got suggestions, start putting them in the comments, and I'll I'll uh, put the suggestions to to Hayden. So mate, what's your your favorite yeah. part about? about hosting events. What do you love the most about ho- about putting on these barbecue competitions? I I guess um oh just a successful event with no no dramas. Um we have a, we've we've done 3. Um I guess the pot of gold's never been there at the end of the at the end of the event for us because of the cost and the insurance and all that sort of stuff and like sure you make money on the um selling of the barbecue there. Um but I, I guess just a trouble-free event after, and it takes such a long time to organise stuff. Like, uh, yeah, 20 hours a week on top of your wage, just phone calls and organising and sponsors. And, you know, every, everyone's very hesitant when it comes to sponsoring an event because you haven't done it before. So it's like, why why, why are we going to give you $1,000 to promote and you're not a promoter? So, um I guess trouble free event, just like sitting down at the end of the day and well that went well and yeah, it's 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 a good experience but it's highly stressful for sure. And um how Jay Jay does an amazing job with um meat stock and yeah, they're going to they're going to Brazil with it and they've got four locations out here. So I oh, I don't know how he does it, but um he does it extremely well and um, I love love meat stock. We grew up at meat stock, black bear. And we'll continue to support him as much as we can. And um, yeah, it's great. You're listening to the internationally awarded Smoking Hot Confessions podcast with massive barbecue nerd Ben Arnott. All righty, Hayden. Now this is the third segment of our show. This is the the, the lesson part where you're going to Im, uh, impart some wisdom to us for the viewers and the and the listeners. And you've told me that today you want to talk mm-hmm. about picanha, which is one of my favorite cuts. And so to pick up some picanha tips from yeah. a from a master like yourself, I'm yeah. really looking forward to this. <laughs> well, I, 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 that's very gracious of you to call me a master. I'm not really um, – not. I, I'm a fan of it, and there's a lot of people that are way better at it than me. But, like, I could tell you how to cook a brisket and um, pork belly and pork ribs and all that sort of stuff. Like, the cows come home and people have heard it. There's a lot of um, – there's a lot of media out there on how to help you do that. And and don't be afraid of those cuts. A brisket, um, it is, as long as you, you get the right stuff, it's, it's a breeze really. It's, um, it's, it's not hard. It's, it's quite easy to do, but the picanha I fell in love with when we went to, um, we went over to Brazil for a, a festival called, um, Churiscada, uh, midway through last year, no nah, year before I should say. Last year didn't happen. <laughs> so we went over there. 
um, with the team, um, Shannon Walker, Jay Beaumont, uh, uh, Jared McDonald, uh, uh, Glenn from Cha Cha Cha, Two Smoking Arabs. Um, had a fantastic time. Great little tight group of Aussies that went over, over there. And um, oh, I was, uh, and Adriana from BRZ Foods as well. He, he was our interpreter. He couldn't have done it without him. So um, we went over there for a, a two-day festival. And, uh, Black Bear and the boys were all cooking lamb shoulders over there. And um, during our week in Sao Paulo, we we're, we're, we're taken around all the best barbecue shops there, which is an amazing experience. If you ever get a chance to go to Brazil, I highly um, recommend it. Um, and, and there was this cut, like pecan, and it's like, and just started, that's just rump cut, isn't it? It has to be rump cut, like, that's what it is. And and uh, the way they were doing it over there, it was just, it just changed, uh, it was like, a, it was like tasting brisket for the first time, like, all the, all the seasonings and the way they, it, it, it's a, uh, it's a show. It's in front of you. Bang. That, like, you got chefs running around with charcoal and sparks in the air. And you got that. Yeah, it's just fantastic how they do it. And it was a real eye-opener for me. And um, ever since then, I've been pushing, pushing, pushing to do Picanha on a, on that exactly that setting. And at that, we're on the cusp <laughs> at, at Vineyard at the moment. We've got two massive... The grills ready to go. We've got the hoods. Um, we've got a couple of a couple of things to do, but that's going to be vineyards next thing. We're going to do dried steak, picanha, everything live in front of there. We're going to have um, we're going to have an animal on a spit all the time over the weekend. So it's going to be an, a different experience for Australians, anyway. Anyway, so picanha, the, the lesson. I think you got to you got to start off. With the with the right um with, with the right cut, not like any of your Cape Grims or um Black Angus, they they all do a good. What's the other one? You sell Black Angus, Black Onyx, anyway, maybe. The uh, yeah, red and black, red and black. Anyway, yeah, yeah. So um, as long as you start off with a good good double content, you but then the trick is to cut when you cut it, depending on which way you do it. Um, you can do it whole. And, and there's a good seasoning mixed by BRZ, really chunky salt uh, from South Australia. It's, it's awesome. Um, and, and then you get a nice red colour on it, slice it up in the steaks and then sear it off. And and it's next level. But the way they did it in Brazil is you cut with the grain and you put it on the skewer, of course, like little kidneys. And, and you cook it to to rare and then slice it up and you get this little finger with a, you know, a quarter inch of fat and then this beautiful meat. And I think um, once you've had that, it's it's like Scot- Scotch fillet's got a, a bit of a hill to climb up to get over the taste and the experience of properly cooked picanha, <laughs> uh, I, I reckon. And um, yeah, we've done it a few times at Vineyard and um, yeah, it's just, it's just, it's just a new experience for us. Well, a lot of people have been doing it for years, but, to do it commercially and right every time. And that's the thing, like we've got some good chefs and I've got complete faith that they'll, they'll pull it off when we turn the, the steak switch on at Blacktown uh, Vineyard. We won't be doing that at all stores. It's just at Vineyard. We've got this, it's a six metre grill with a, a fireplace in the middle and it's, it's going to be out of control. It's going to be awesome. So um, you'll be able to come in and experience those those memories, hopefully I can create, recreate them for the Australian public, steak loving public um, out here too. So it, it's going to be sit down, of course, table service, you know, so it's going to be good. But um, yeah, that, that's my experience. Um, I can't really, you can, I can't really tell you the recipe on the, um, the rub. It's a, it's a really, really coarse salt. I don't know what else is in there to tell you the truth, but it's, he does a good job, old Adriana, and he's got a um, good online shop, and you can, I'm sure you can buy it from him. Um, but salt and pepper is good as well. Like our salt and pepper is our beef rub that we've got. That that works as well. So I, I do it all the time down here on the campfire. Um, you can put it on a, a rotisserie, of course. Um, but um, yeah, not not that, if you can if you can sharpen your game up with the picanha or rump cap, depending on what you want to call it. Um, I think it's a good uh, party trick to have 
at the weekend barbecue for sure. <laughs> it gets very theatrical too, as that uh, that as that rump cap starts to melt and they drop down into the fire and the flames come shooting yeah. up and yeah, it's unreal. I'll, I'll, I love it. Yeah, it's great. It's really really good. Um, the smells are incredible as well. Of the fat rendering down. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's the next level stuff. I think. But that's the way the South Americans love it. They they. Especially in Brazil, Argentina, they, they tend to uh, they tend to overcook their meat a bit. Whenever we went out in Argentina, it was wasn't as rare as Brazil. Brazil was uh, rare as and it was everyone all over your face sort of stuff. It's great, it's beautiful. <laughs> but um, yeah, Argentina was a good experience. <laughs> Argentina was a good experience as well. Yeah, so uh, fond memories of that trip. Hopefully, we can do it again after this blows away. So um, yeah, it's good. Anything else you would like to know about Pacana? That's <laughs> I don't think I know much more than that to tell you the truth. Pretty much just when it comes to serving it up, do you prefer like a red or a green chimichurri, or do you just eat it just the meat? Um, green for sure. Um, yeah, I don't know what they put in it over Brazil. I've tried to try to make it a few times out here. Um, we got pretty close. Um, I think I. Uh, Zoo and Flame in Sydney too do do a wonderful job down in Alexandria too. We've, we've been stuck there a couple of times on our way to our distilling factory because we do uh, a moonshine too. We it's, oh, um, wow. we've got a range of products. We've got so, we've got sauces and rubs, a range of sauces and rubs, and then we're we're, we're in our second batch of moonshine. So we do five hundred bottles at once from the uh, distillery down there, and it's got our name on it, and we sell it at our bar. We've got a little bar too, by the way, at, at Bella Vista, the pickled bear. So we've got a little cocktail bar. It's a, it's a nice place to get away and um, yeah, escape the pokies and all that sort of stuff. And it's but it was getting um, before before this current situation. We were um, we we're, we're going really good. It's a, a group of locals, a businessmen that come down and drink and got our we we serve picanha down there as well. So we cry back at it. We cook at it. At vineyard and then transport it across and, and and cook it out of a quick oven down there, and um so it's a little cocktail bar with a difference. It's uh, got pulled pork sliders, pulled pulled beef sliders, picanha, as well as like awesome cocktails. We've got a really good bartender, so um that's been that's been an eye opening experience. Me and me and Chop have got that, and um yeah, it's just a, it, I've just, just so many facets to our to our businesses you know we've got the butchery now with shannon walker probably one of the greatest butchers in australia the most passionate butchers in australia i'm sure you've talked to him um he's he's running his little operation there um training people up and the range of sausages he does is out of control it's um it's does a really good job and then that filters down to all the stores all the stores get a sausage of the week and the bar gets a sausage of the week um yeah it's a great team we've got it's um it's good. Um, yeah, we we work hard, but we play harder. I think. Very nice, very nice indeed. I I, I love the sound of that mm. sausage of the week. So look, that's probably a good point for us now to start yeah. uh, to to wrap up this episode. So I'm going to throw it over to you now. You can uh, yep. give some praise, give some shout okay. outs, give some thank yous to people that have helped you out along the way, and tell everybody where they can find okay. Black Bear on the different social media. Okay, oh, I I'd, I'd just like to thank the the support I've had from friends and family and especially my wife and kids and um and anyone that sort of believed in us um it, it's a group effort this thing and I, I, I can't do it without without them and i can't do it without the staff honest honest hard-working staff and we've had some of the best um working for us and once they start working for you they really don't leave until they've you know they've complete they've moved on to the next career or whatever so everyone seems to have a good time at black bear and i'm, I'm totally uh, totally proud of what the the product we put out and the, and the people that work for us um and, and just the ideas and the people throw at you and a lot of a lot of the time they're good ideas and it's just a matter of having enough time to um to pull these ideas off like the moonshine and the bar and the sauces and rubs which are just such a difficult process to get to get right and on the shelf in front of people and um once that once that's done, it's it's a massive relief, and I can't I can't do it myself. And um, just like to thank everyone, um, and yeah, looking forward to the future really. And um, 
if you if you if you want to try black bear or you're interested or you got any questions you know there's the instagram handle you can catch me on um that's about the only i don't do facebook there's a team that do, do facebook for us so if you, if you want to if you want to talk to me I'm, I'm always on black bear barbecue AUS, I think it is. So I should know that by now. Forty thousand followers, but <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, yeah, jump on and a- any questions if you want a job or you. And we're always, we're always doing lessons too. So at Vineyard, there's a great space out the back where you can you have up to forty people in a lesson, um, and they're sold out in the first day every time. Uh, everyone has a great time, learns a lot of whole, whole new stuff, and they all go home with. Uh, bag full of goodies and a stomach full of food and it's a great day i think i don't think we've ever had a complaint on any of our classes so and it, and you, you you gain customers they they come in they've they've, they've had a, a, a class bought from them by a close one or whatever and i just love it they're they're customers for life friends for life you know their name it's great to meet a whole new group of people um yeah so if you if, if you want to do classes or you want to come into our stores we're open Blacktown's like a cafe, so it opens at six o'clock in the morning, closes at two o'clock every afternoon, and it's open on Friday nights only, from from five thirty to about eight thirty. So it's not super busy anymore because the other two stores have taken the pressure off it. So there's a smaller staff, and we can close up, and everyone's home by nine o'clock, at, like on a on a Friday night, rather than getting home at one thirty in the morning and. Hurt. <laughs> hurts. <laughs> so yeah, it's uh, Weatherall Park. Weatherall Park's going great. That's a great store. With, you know, air conditioning, dining, even. Um, there's even a big fake bear there. <laughs> but um, Very nice. yeah, it's good. Um, and and Vineyard is just a, a another a whole. They're very very different. All of the, every store is different. So, but the same. They're different, but the same. They're just a different venue, and, and it's hard to get that. I think Black Bear needs that difference in, in venue, like for different areas. Um, but Vineyard, Vineyard, I can't wait to do the markets and the farmers markets, barbecue comps. Um, it's going to be a very exciting um, couple of years ahead of us, and I can't wait to um, to see it, see it grow. Um, yeah, so I got got a good team. Beautiful, mate. Beautiful. Well, look, I'm I'm going to uh, say thank you very much for your time here. I'm I'm going to let. Let, uh, let you get back to your beautiful weekend getaway that you're having there. And, uh, and I look oh. forward to being able to come down <laughs> yeah. to Sydney myself here and, uh, and, and try black bear for myself. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, no problem. At all. Let, let us know. And, and thanks for having us on. It's, um, it's a great thing you're doing for the um, Australian barbecue community. And I think it needs it because literally five years ago, I didn't, I didn't know about any of this stuff. Like I, I knew, but you didn't, the, you, you, it's not in your hand, you know, you're not eating it. So um, it's good to be able to provide that and it's, it's good to grow the community for sure. Definitely. Thanks, mate. Enjoy the rest of your day. See you guys. You're welcome. All righty, family. There you have it. That was the one and only Hayden Graham from Black Bear Barbecue. Super busy guy. He's got uh, so many different uh, aspects of this restaurant now are up and running. What an incredible insight into a real, true Aussie barbecue icon. And uh, it's a bit sad about the Invitational, but that's just the state of the world at the moment. I'm sure we'll get back to that again another time. Now, before I let you go today, just a quick reminder. Um, big thanks to our podcast partner, Ozpig, for, for joining with us for this episode, to help bring you this episode. If you're looking for the ultimate uh, camp cooker, do check them out. They got grills, rotisseries, smoker attachments, you name it, you can cook it on an Ozpig out in the bush, traveling with your caravan, traveling with your family, spend some quality time, have some lovely food together. Also, if you're just at the start of your journey, head on over to smokinghotconfessions.com, recipes, tips, how to's, and that award winning ebook, The Beginner's Guide to Real Barbecue. You can get yourself a copy of that there as well. And Big thank you to the people that have joined us today in the Smoking Hot Confessions barbecue community. We've loved having you. We've loved seeing all the different comments and the all the love flowing for, for Black Bear today. So come join us there if you're not there already. And if you wouldn't mind just doing the thing on the socials for us, all the likes, the shares, the comments, all that stuff, we'd love all that as well. So until next time, take care of each other and keep on queuing. Thanks for listening to the Smoking Hot Confessions podcast. 
head on over to smokinghotconfessions.com for recipes, tips, and Ben's own confessions. <laughs>